On PRM Express tonight, the Dagbon peace process, two days to the first funeral, keeping the peace. A very essential question we'll be asking tonight. There's a, there's a huge background to this because this has been going on for um, decades. We, we cannot go into the conversation without giving a sense of the background to how far we've come until where we are today. Almost two decades of the Dagbon chieftaincy clashes. After the uh, murder of Yana Yakub and Danny, you probably will remember it in 2002, left the two families, and Danny's and the Abudu's divided, and the properties destroyed. Um, there has since been an uneasy calm with attempts by successive governments to try and restore peace to this particular area of the northern region. A committee of eminent chiefs led by the Asante Hindu 242 to the second was formed um, you know, to try and look into this. After the 20, 2002 debacle, uh, to find lasting peace to this area. In January 28, 2016 though, the Abudu Royal uh, family representatives there, they accused the mediation team. And so we'll see something that is happening in the last few days, not different from what we are seeing, what we saw in 2016. They accused the mediation committee of bias. Now, they boycotted the sub subsequent invitations for fresh talks to happen uh, on the implementation of the final phase of the roadmap to peace in Dagbon. Now, this follows, they also accused the uh, committee of abandoning their own roadmap to the peace and also operating under the sole direction of the Kugana, who is with the support of the uh, Andani family, usurping the powers of the uh, Gushina. These are accusations that we've seen over the period. Uh, fast forward to September uh, 5, 2017. The representatives of the uh, two royals in the Dagbon agreed to resume peace talks at the Manisha Palace in Kumasi. This was good news uh, on the back of the election of this government. Then on November 16, the big event uh, took many by surprise. The Asantehini led the mediation team and they went to the president and presented uh, their report. They said they had achieved a resolution of the, st of the stalemate and the finalizers roadmap to the restoration of peace in Dagon. That was an essential day uh, in the history of this conflict. Then on November 21st, the committee uh, finally made that presentation to, to, the, to, to the president. We have the roadmap. Now, the Asantehini stated the report, amongst other considerations, was to give credence to the Supreme Court ruling that the late Yana uh, Muhammadu Abdullah uh, died as a legitimate Yana, for which reason his uh, funeral should be performed as such. And so they laid out the roadmap. And we know that on the 14th, that is this, uh, this very week, weekend, Saturday and Friday, to the 28th, the first of the funerals will happen. And then we'll have the second funeral, set of funerals also uh, from the 4th to the 18th of 2019. Two separate funerals, two royals uh, will be done. And that is a, a conversation, that is what has led to this conversation because of the proximity to that deadline, which is this Friday. We need to explore how you maintain the peace while you do this. It is hope that the burials will pave way for the enschemement of a new Yana for the people of Dagbon. There have been several issues though. It hasn't been smooth sailing at all. We know that the region of Dagbon, the uh, Kampakuyana uh, uh, and Dani Yakubu Abdullah, has petitioned the president, raising a number of issues, including bias against the Otunfo led committee. He describes the decision of the committee as entirely out of tune with the principles of mediation and with the Dagbon customs. This is a direct quote from the petition that he sent to the president. And he also says, accuses the committee of being biased. Um, he believes that he's being sidelined in the process. Experts caution that although, yes, it is important for the top echelons to be involved, the people at the bottom should also be involved. You cannot just deal with the chiefs, deal with the, uh, the youth in, the, in these communities as well. We've seen that. This is all happening at a time when the northern region itself, it's not a place known for, 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 for overwhelming calm. There are a lot of flashpoints in the northern region. We've seen some erupt in the last few days. Bali, for example, just over the weekend, erupted. One person died. They imposed a curfew uh, just yesterday on, on the Bali township. Uh, in the northern region. The police, the military, they are stretched in the northern region. Yesterday, the police confirmed to us that they've already asked for reinforcements. 100 policemen are going to be sent to, from Accra 
to go and help them. Military men, reinforcement also being sent. That is how tense the situation is. Meanwhile, you're having to also manage the funeral on Friday. That is why this conversation is important. What can we do to ensure that in this wake of all the challenges the northern region faces with security, we can still manage this process peacefully? That is one of the key things that we'll be exploring today. Um, in 24 hours, the funerals will happen. How do we keep the peace? When I return from the break, I have two guests who have been following this Dagon chieftaincy issue, the roadmap. They've been involved in it. They've been consulted. They, they know this back to back. They'll be telling us how they'll be giving their own assessment of the situation in Dagon currently. But most importantly, how should the power brokers leading the efforts manage this so that we still have peace by the end of the processes of the burial of the two chiefs? Stay with that. This is an essential conversation. I know many of you in the Northern Region watch us a lot. Uh, if you want to see the bulk of our, our viewers, they are in the Northern Region. And so this is important. You want to pay attention to what the conversation is going to be. And so mostly, most importantly, at the end of the day, you will, information is important so that people who are, I guess, plotting, and the fear is maybe, maybe plotting to destabilize a process with information and armed with information can be in a position to avoid that. Stay with us here on PM Express. We'll return, a conversation will go on. My guest in the studio tonight, Dr. Kwesi Enning. Dr. Emmanuel Kwesi is a Director of Faculty of Academic Affairs and Research at the uh, Kofi Annan International Peacekeeping Training Center. He is also a well-known security expert, has consulted on a broad range of things, both here in Ghana and abroad, and joins us in the studio. I'm grateful that you join us, Doc. Thank you, Thank you very much. Also joining us is a man who um, has, has played a significant role in, uh, in the processes of peace, both here in Ghana and internationally as well. Is he, uh, if you remember the West Africa Network for Peace uh, building, WANEP, they, he was at the heart of it. In fact, he, he founded that great organization. He was once the uh, Deputy Foreign Affairs Minister, uh, Emmanuel Bombande. Mr. Bombande, I'm grateful that you join us. Thank you so much. Grateful to, to have you. Good evening. Uh, mm -hmm. Dr. Henning, let me start with you. What's your own assessment of where we are, where Dagon is tonight? 24 hours before this very important funeral? Well, 24 hours before the funeral, we need to accept <clears throat> and recognize that peacemaking is a long, sometimes treacherous process of give and take, that the actual signing of a peace agreement is the beginning of a process that seeks to build trust and to arrive at a point where the contending parties can say we are satisfied with what we have got out of the mediation process. I think it's dangerous and wrong for the generality of the public to misconstrue the agreement that was presented as a necessarily final document okay. in which every single one agrees. No. This is where we've agreed based on what we know, because one of the most contentious issues about the whole process was who gets into the Bewa Palace to perform the funeral rites first, leaves it and allows somebody else to go in. Now, that is a positive step after almost, as you correctly said, probably a little over one and a half decades yeah. of this conflict. It's become not only a Dagbon conflict, but a Ghanaian conflict, true. because it actually identifies who we are and our conflict resolution mechanisms. That's true, because I was just reading a, a, an article I just found yeah. on the the Guardian newspaper mm -hmm. website, very thoroughly written about, yeah. about this forthcoming um, funerals yeah. and how it, it, they put it in the context of Ghana yeah. and how yes. this probably define our, our security stability. Sure. We, we live here, we know that's not <laughs> exactly true, but that is how the international community will read yeah. this. That's and, how the international and community perceives that. Yeah. And mm -hmm. that is why it's crucial 
that whatever tiny steps have been made. Because look, one of the things we need to agree is that first, a group of people who were critical stakeholders came around to say, we agreed to this roadmap. But it's also normal, and I think my dear friend Emmanuel might have a, a, um, another interpretation or say that when you put that, that signature on that document, it doesn't mean you've resolved all the outstanding issues. No. Okay. All it says is that, look, this is a framework within which we can work to achieve that concept of lasting peace. Mm. Okay. So I am not particularly taken aback by what we are seeing. But precisely because of two crucial issues. One is the emotive issue. This crisis is driven by multiple interests and perceptions. But the issue of the emotions underpinning the way different stakeholders react, the ability to contain those emotions, otherwise they begin to have some security implications. And from the Guardian article, and I'm sure quite a number of other international newspapers are writing, um, other <coughs> intelligence agencies are assessing the threat, because this goes beyond just the bomb. Mm. It's about whether we are secure enough for people to invest here, whether our intelligence and security forces have understood the threat and can prevent it from escalating. But let me make a final point. As Ghanaians, we have an interest in ensuring that we bring this crisis to an end in which the critical stakeholders are satisfied that they must give and then take. We cannot resolve it in a manner where everybody becomes a total winner. No. We've got to give and to take. And we need to reach that point where the state uses its resources, its coercive powers, its conflict resolution powers to say, enough is enough. Uh, Dr. Bombande, uh, Mr. Bombande, is Dagbon in a place tonight to accommodate these two funerals? Uh, we should keep in mind that throughout the trajectory of the protracted conflict of Dagbon and the search for peace in Dagbon, compromises have often and always prevailed. Mm. So let me use just one minute to clarify from where my good friend Dr. Eni left the issues that seem not to be understood by our general public. Okay. The Otunfo led mediation committee is often presented as having made a decision. Mediation processes do not make decisions for the parties. The de deliberative processes make the mediation committee to facilitate. And the outcomes are the collective outcomes that are a contribution of the parties that we call an agreement. And in this case, we refer to it as a roadmap. So when you hear the disagreement that the committee has made decisions, mm. there is something there that needs clarification. But it should not surprise you because interlocking in the search for peace in Dagbon has been the trial of commissions of inquiry. Yeah. A commission of inquiry investigates and writes a report. And the report would always try to find out who was wrong in this particular process. Yeah. We've tried the court processes up to the Supreme Court. Yeah. The court processes make a decision and it becomes law. Then our peacekeeping officers, both the police and the military, have done their role, as my good friend has explained. The mediation aspect has prevailed, but it's often not talked about. And when it is talked about, it is often confused. So when you hear that a progress report was presented to the President of the Republic, the report is not a decision that was made by the committee for people to have grievances with. Which then goes back to reinforce what Dr. Eni said. That that report will recognize that now we want to go into the real nitty-gritty of implementation of collective decisions that emerged. But how we do that is the beginning of the real work. Because the moment we want to now go to the implementation,
The whole issues about uncertainties, mm. the whole issues about trust and confidence, that has always been part of the process because of the nature and the context of the conflict. It is very intractable. It is very protected. The, the skin of Dagon is what any Dagomba or the Dagamba will see to be a premium above anything else in this world. And so they relate with their own traditional systems and customary rights as supreme, just like in mm -hmm. Asantiman. Yeah. And so you should understand that it has been very difficult. My second quick point is that you are trying to modernize a traditional state. And in trying to modernize a traditional state, there will be contending issues about how does the norm and practices of custom and tradition play a role even as you try to move forward in what is seen to be a modernization. Mm -hmm. That then would have a, 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 a counter currency yeah. with the modern state. Because the modern state has a Supreme Court that makes a ruling and everything then is subjected to that Supreme Court ruling. Yeah. But then people would then argue that our traditional norms and practices cannot be overturned. And that is why your question is, 24 hours be mm. before we start the yeah. burial rites, the compromises must come back. And one quick example to conclude on this. In 1988, when John Bauer was PNDC uh, Regional Secretary for the Northern Region, the issue then was, how will Yana Muhammadu Abdullah be buried? Mm. The Supreme Court had made a decision. He had been removed from the skin. He died as an ordinary person. Mm. But the decision was that because of the role he played in the past, he should still be given the respects, courtesies of Ayana. The contending issue then was, what privileges and rights comes along with that? And so the issue was, he should be buried in the Kutindo, mm -hmm. which is the secret room in the, mm -hmm. uh, the, the royal mm -hmm. cemetery of, uh, 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 of, of uh, uh, Dagon. And the argument then from the one who was sitting on the skin then, Yana uh, and Danny was, if he died not as a Yana, why should we bury him here? But at that point, reasoning prevailed. There were compromises. He was buried in the Goa Palace, but with certain limitations. Mm. And now after, so we're talking about 1988, mm -hmm. now it is the funeral that should then give way to the other rights to proceed. I want to believe that the compromises will pre prevail again. And that is why I agree that we must be optimistic mm -hmm. in what steps have we taken that is positive and that is over and above the challenges that will be there and that we need to continue to overcome. But th th that is fascinating. And Doug, mm -hmm. I want to bring in Alan Ashif make uh, points because on his first point about the Otung for um, committee's presentation of the report to the president, he, he uses the word collective this mm -hmm. is a collective decision this is not this is a collective sort of um we, we've come together and this is what yeah. we've agreed to do it's yeah. not like a decision that they've made yeah but i, I want to pick on the word collective yeah. was it really a collective um, um whatever he presented the roadmap because we know that a very important figure had come out to say we don't have we don't we don't respect this with some, and I'm talking about the region of Dagon, mm -hmm. the Kampukiana mm -hmm. and Dani Yakubu Abdullah, has had made that point. Mm -hmm. In addition to all the points you made, is that really at the heart of why people seem to fear going into to, to Friday that there may be something else that we need to be looking at beyond just wanting to go ahead with the funeral? Well, I mean, I don't know the processes going behind the scenes right now. Okay. But I doubt very much if Name and I were part of a mediation process, we would present a document as a collective document representing the interests of all the key stakeholders, if that were not to be so. Okay. Mm -hmm. Because, you mm -hmm. see, mediation processes are predicated on trust and transparency and inclusiveness. And that is why the word collective, collective. is key. Yeah. When the trust is broken, when it is not inclusive, mm -hmm. and you present a document 
that the critical stakeholders don't buy into, then first you've lost the trust, you've lost the respect. So I think the real question here is, what are the counterfactuals? What is it that took place after this collective agreement and before it was presented in Accra? Okay. That is what people are not talking about. Mm -hmm. Okay. Number two, why should the members of that committee put their hard and reputation domestic and international on the line if it wasn't a collective agreement. Mm -hmm. So I think between now and Friday morning, we need to ask ourselves, there is this inexplicable gap Sorry. between that collective agreed document and this presentation in Accra. Because you can see, and I think here it's, it's crucial that we do two things. First, we disaggregate the language used during the flax, the Jubilee House presentation. Okay. Yeah, the oral, yeah. you know, the words used, and then the body language. Mm -hmm. One of the things we don't tend to place emphasis on is the way people's, that is what we call non-verbal expressions, okay. send clear signals as to whether they agree with something or not. So to be honest with you, Evans, I am truly not perturbed nor disturbed by the public statements of disagreement, uh, what was the words that were used, um, of not being involved and yeah. all that. Mm -hmm. And that because won't allow one person to hold the nation to precisely. write songs, yeah. et cetera, et cetera. Because you see, disaggregating the language is key. And this is not much different from almost all contentious conflicts where the mediation process and the negotiation process have been protect, uh, 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 protracted, mm. very difficult, and, that, and also very contentious. Let's also not forget that they have, peace is not a common good. Mm. Mm. It's not everyone in Ghana or Dagbon who wants it. Who wants it. Okay. Okay. So we need the forces that be to understand what happened between that agreement its presentation and then the contentions prior to Friday. Now, I doubt very much my dear friend Bombande has been in government before, so I don't know what is happening. Behind the scenes. But behind the scenes. But certainly we're here to invite me to be in government when he was there <laughs> or to advise him. <laughs> I would have said, look, we need to find answers to these things very quickly. What before Friday? Before Friday. Because look the resources of the state, the state of Ghana has, has acquiesced too much to such an extent that some of the interested parties in this conflict think they can always hold the state to ransom. Which is what Otunfo said. My argument is that, you see, even in the traditional state, nobody can hold a traditional authority to ransom, much more the modern state. So looking at the Guardian story, the net negative impact of a country perceived internationally as violent, unable and incapable of resolving a traditional conflict, and it may be couched in such a negative manner yeah. as if we don't have any capacity at all. Yeah. But I think it's crucial that we use our resources, intelligence, security, academic, economic, to say what is it that really took place. And we have the tools to be able to find out. Yeah. Okay, because this is posing a threat to what we've worked on for, what, 18 years? Um, and truly, it is in our collective interest as a nation, our domestic reputation, international reputation, our peace of mind, freedom from fear, that we get this process going. And then those who are struggling, those who are suspicious of the process, brought in in a manner that they can see their interest captured one way or the other. You say that, but I want to bring in Mr. Bombandi mm. again on this. But if you listen to, first of all, I need to understand within the cultural context, the, the, and, and Otunfo made the point that the, the Kampukuya now seemed to be uh, was, uh, something of a temporary 
overlord. They put him in there for, um, for the process, during the process, so that you know, once the process is done, a substantive one will be, will be put in. Well, what is his role in the, in the grand scheme of things? I mean, how essential is the Campo Kuyana in, within this, in this process, for example, going forward? I ask that because of his public dissent. And because he says, for example, in a statement to the president, and we know he copied international dip diplomacy, the, uh, the diplomatic uh, missions, he copied even the UN. Mm -hmm. He says, the pronouncement of His Majesty Tung for, before Your Excellency on the 21st November exposes clearly the untruths in which the decisions of the mediation, you addressed that word decision. Mm -hmm. Decisions of the mediation, and that was in quotations in his own uh, statement, of the mediation committee of the eminent chiefs is based. The decisions entirely out of tune with the principles of mediation and with Dagbon customs appear to be aimed at achieving an agenda that should not be adapted by Your Excellency, democratic father of, our, of, of all Ghanaians, and that the oath you took upon the assumption of office. The bias of the Tunfo Committee against the nonpartisan kingmakers of Dagbon is quite palpable. These are strong, mm -hmm. scary words mm -hmm. with, within the context of the Dagbon chieftaincy conflict coming from the Kampu Kuyana. When you hear these words as a mediator yourself, knowing all that has happened until now, what's your, what's your reaction to this, knowing what we are going to do on, on Friday? Thank you so much. And let me appreciate the framing that my good friend, Dr. Enim, uh, presented. Because both of us mm -hmm. see mediation now as the issue. Okay. The question is, was something else happening that was called mediation? Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. Or was it mediation? Mm -hmm. And we are saying that if it is mediation, it is a process. First of all, it is even a voluntary mm -hmm. participation of the parties. But we know that President Kufo, mm -hmm. after all the initial efforts that we brought in with all the advocacy, took the right decision in saying, let this be led by a very prominent king chairing a committee of eminent kings. Yeah. And that, for me, is still a very strong way to appreciate what we did in the past in this whole process. Now, in the mediation process, without uh, dwelling on that, yeah. basically what Dr. Enin is saying is our skill to be persuasive, mm -hmm. our capacity, even when there is confrontation, to continue to be the intermediary, okay. appears to have been publicly not visible. Mm -hmm. Okay. Though we can also understand that, hey, it can be very frustrating. And he's the dean of the uh, academic affairs. And some of the courses we teach in the whole era of mediation skills is precisely to do that. That how does the, the mediator in that intermediary role undertake to continue without uh, letting out what probably uh, came across. But you, uh, to go back to uh, what is the, the real issue. Yeah with the quotations that you yes, made. Yes. First of all, that document or letter written to the president was inviting the president to, so to speak, intervene. True. But you see, the president is being put in a very difficult position because the president cannot overrule the mediation process. Mm -hmm. The president cannot say that, I've listened to you, you are not happy with the process, and I'm overruling it. Yeah. Precisely because it is in the realm of inviting both royal gates to have a, a level of mutual satisfaction in how Dagon would go forward. In that process, compromises are very key because regardless of the norms and traditions, if you are not able to bring in the type of compromises that would allow the process to unfold, the, the, the president cannot do that. The chair of the mediation cannot do that. Neither can the committee members do that. Mm. It is the goodwill, and that is what he mm -hmm. talked about in terms of the confidence and the trust that must prevail. But hasn't the trust broken here? Isn't now, the trust broken here from what, what they... The, uh, uh, what I see here in terms of the trust breaking down is what I would call the expression of anxiety and frustration mm -hmm. of what is unpredictable. And... You talked about, so what is the role of the yeah, uh, Kampakayana? Kampu As the regent, he's currently the overall of, of Dagon. Okay. So basically what we are saying is that the moment he performs his father's funeral, he will have to vacate mm -hmm. ah. 
<laughs> now there are three. He, he would mm -hmm. have to vacate this, the the, the yes, role yeah. that he's playing. Okay. And what would normally then happen is that he will join the queue. Ah. There are <laughs> there are three pathways. Okay. To get to the skin, <laughs> you must be the paramount chief of Mion, mm -hmm. Savulgu, mm -hmm. or Karaga. Karaga yeah. mm. So there are legitimate argues that the funeral of uh, somebody like the Myonglana has not yet been performed. Mm. And to that extent, where do I go to queue from? Mm. Because of the three, mm. there is a certain uh, paramount chief mm -hmm. in one of the three. Mm. Where is so there is a collective interest, but we cannot also pretend and run away from what could be an individual yeah. and a personal interest. Interesting. So now we need, and so what my good name is saying is before Friday, confidence building also comes with the assurances mm -hmm. and reassurances of key leaders and stakeholders in a mediation process. Mm. And if you if you follow very attentively, one of your colleagues went and was granted an interview. Yes. My sense is that that interview brought out a whole different perspective that was more progressive than this one, yeah. than, than his original yeah. document. I, and I watched it before we came on. Yeah. Okay. Because there were questions about, nobody has come to talk with me about my father's funeral. Yeah. So he too is in a situation in which, whether you like it or not, he's regent, he's the overall of Dagon, but he also has concerns about, so what is going to happen? Yeah. And let's not run away from the narrative. Mm. Though we are, tonight we don't want to talk yeah. about mm. the past. Yeah. But we have come from a very difficult and complex past. Mm. So now if we can use the remaining hours for those reassurances, those guarantees that the process is inclusive, mm. and I want to emphasize mm. that word that uh, Dr. Mm. Enning used, it's very inclusive. And in the mediation process, don't worry, even if you okay. feel that you did everything that was right. But one of the parties says, I feel excluded. Mm -hmm. Or people are not coming to me and talking about my father's funeral. S there is a voice that says, I'm in need of something. Mm -hmm. Okay. You need to respond Approach to it. Me. Yeah. Approach yes. me. Approach yeah. me. Talk to me. Yes. Talk to me. Okay. So that's why mediation now will refrain from the attitude of directives okay. and instructions. Yeah. But now go beyond very quietly mm -hmm. to say, I'm listening to you. Mm -hmm. I'm hearing something. Maybe it could have come earlier, but it did not come early. Yeah. What can I do to respond to, fix that. to what you are feeling? But now? you made a very important point. In that interview you cite, mm -hmm. he said, and you quoted appropriately, or rightly, that I haven't been consulted. Yeah. Yeah. And, yeah. and in fact, he said that my father's funeral on the 4th of January, yeah. If that consultation doesn't happen, might not even come off. Precisely. But but that is the point, right? That if the country had had this major announcement, it was the media scene was replete with the announcement at the, the Flagstaff House. And yet one of the key actors is saying, you fixed the day for my father's funeral, and I'm, I, I don't know anything about it. Precisely the point. And the two of us, mm -hmm. our attitude is not to find faults okay. with how processes yeah. have been dealt mm -hmm. with. Yeah. But to so how do you repair it? How do you and, that? and that is why uh, the, the, the point is... Reach out to the man. And yep. make sure that we are... Re it is like re-evaluating okay. what needs to be done that has not been done. Yeah. Yeah. How do we ensure that is happening? Because whether you like it or not, let's appreciate our security agencies. Mm -hmm. Because what we are hearing is that they are doing everything to ensure that the environment is yeah. coordinated securely for the funeral to happen. But they cannot be seen to do anything that touches on the substantive issue True. of the process. Yeah. True. So that's why everybody has a role here to play. Yeah. And that is why the consultation is not just with the key stakeholders, but it's, it's just with everybody mm -hmm. who is involved. Because if, for example, your, your police commander or military commanders have no clue what is happening, but you're saying that go and make sure that uh, mm -hmm. uh, uh, things are right. They don't know what the emotions are, mm -hmm. and he talked about the, the, the emotive aspects of it. Then it's like we're trying to clap hands, but the hands are bypassing one yeah. another yeah. instead of coming together. Yeah. And there is no mediation process that is successful without coordination. Yeah. Now, having said this, mediators, in, depending on the context, can bring a proposal for the parties to discuss. Mm -hmm. Currently, Martin Griffiths is doing that in Yemen. Okay. He has given the two 
a process approach, but he is not the one to make a decision for mm -hmm. the, no. the... Make it yourself. The, make it yourself. The, the Saudi-backed government and the Houthi rebels must, in the room, build the type of confidence and consensus to put this in place. And so far, they have agreed on a swap yeah. of prisoners. Yeah. That's how mediation is. Yeah. And I want to emphasize mm -hmm. another thing here before uh, probably you move on. There is no step that is definite. Every step is looked upon, re-evaluated, refined, and implemented. Okay. So it's very normal mm -hmm. that when you thought you had a stage that was accepted, issues then begin to emerge mm -hmm. about the level of acceptance not being complete. So you go back, you listen, you deal with it, yeah. and then you address it. But each step that you take that is successful, you also build more confidence. Yeah. So confidence even rapidly builds mm. when you begin to implement the roadmap. Yeah. More than even when you were preparing to bring the roadmap in Doc, place. So how should, and we'll come to the specifics of the funerals and whether the squeeze situation allows it, and that's where I'll we'll bring it. But with all that we've mm -hmm. just said, how should that Otun Force eminent um, committee approach this now that we know that we are approaching a very important time the man says i still haven't been consulted he actually stated that this one i believe won't happen but the dates have been set the whole world is watching that his will start on the fourth what should happen should those dates still be set in stone or should as we're hearing somebody should be ready to make some compromise in terms of if you consult him and he still insists we can adjust the time well, what, what's your own, what, how, how do we fix this? Look, there's a statement, I'm not being consulted, you cannot bury my dad without consulting me. That is fine. I mean, it's not for us, I think, to say, oh, we find it very surprising that you were not consulted. For me, I don't think that is the issue. Okay. He's, somebody has said, look, I'm terribly offended and hurt that I didn't play the role in this roadmap as I think I ought to. But there are multiple, potentially multiple reasons driving this. When you've chopped small power, but you are in a temporary position, <laughs> and as my friend has um, explained very eloquently, Mion Savelugu Karaga are failed, therefore you've got to join the queue. Sometimes in the mediation process, we agree to things. And don't forget that all advisors around whoever is the leader, some are consensus seeking, some want dialogue, some want peace. And they are the hardliners who say, no, you're you giving it. too much away. Yeah. Okay. So all these contending forces, interest, incentives, disincentives are going on. It is up to the committee and the technical team to take a couple of steps back and to say, look, yes, the date might have been fixed, the whole wide world knows, but between now and the fourth is a long time. Yeah. Okay? For our national reputation and for the sake of our collective interest, for me, shifting and keeping the date is not a real issue. It's about ensuring that the consultations take place in a manner that those who feel overlooked, offended, hurt, emotionally sidelined, are brought on board. Now, when people feel important in, their, in the position that they occupy and they feel slighted publicly, then assuaging those hurts does take a bit of time. Mm. But I think the committee has enough expertise, experience, nuance, and panache to be able to carry this through. Look, I've become an optimist in different ways because we need to move on, OK? We don't need to be blind in our optimism, but I think we need to, to be cognizant when people feel hurt, groups feel hurt, stakeholders feel that their interests have not been taken care of. Let's assuage those fears. Let's build a stronger, trusting relationship and as my name said, look, these are such tiny steps, millimeter by millimeter. I mean, if you see those who do the mining, I actually mm -hmm. always link this mm -hmm. into the mining. One millimeter at a time, building trust, assuaging people's confidences, assuring them of their security, assuring them of their survival, and moving on. 
this is a long term, tedious, tenuous, tricky process. We need to accept that. But I think there was such a hula baloo about the peace process being, <laughs> being presented that people didn't look at the pitfalls. Okay. But for those of us who do this mm -hmm. on a daily basis, mm -hmm. we knew we'd be proud to the, to the presentation that this was the beginning of the hard work. So this comes as no surprise at all. The work must continue. We must look at where the challenges are and the problems are, assuage those fears, assuage the heads and emotions, and then move on. We can get it done. We take a short break. When we return, we'll look at the security situation um, in, the, in, in that part of the country as we go into these funerals. What should it be? What is it currently? And we've heard about military and police reinforcement being sent into the place from Accra. What should intelligence be? What should the role of the security operatives who are being sent there be? Is it just to, to keep the peace and ensure that laws aren't broken? Or they should have a, another role, as the, as the UN peacekeepers will do. What should that be? We'll be interrogating that when we return from the break. It's so live here on PM Express. And just as we've been uh, talking, my producer just sent me a statement that had just uh, come in uh, from the Mengsha Palace. And it's, this is directed to the regional minister in, in the northern region. And it says that, Dear Sir, this is signed by Kofi Bedu, the chief of staff at Mengsha Palace. He says, Dear Sir, uh, I'm directed by His Majesty Otun Forsyth to the second as Antihene, as acting chief, uh, as Antihene acting as chairman of the eminent chiefs, to formally notify you that as part of the peace process, he has directed that from the commencement to the end of the funeral by both gates, there should be no enskinment in Yendi until after the selection of a new Yana. Mm -hmm. It continues. It is the hope of the committee of eminent chiefs that all concerned will fully cooperate to ensure this successful conclusion of the roadmap and to pave the way for the restoration of peace in Dagbon. Yours faithfully, Kofi Bedu, Chief of Staff, and this copy to the Honorable uh, Albert Kandapa, Minister for National Security, the Abudu Royal Family, and Andani Royal Family. What do you make of this? This is this just came in from, from the Mensha Palace. Uh, Ms. Eni. Well, I think it's once more reflective of the confidence building measures that we've been talking about. Because as my name can probably explain much better, better than, I, than I, one of the most difficult aspects of getting to where we are related to the burials. Because how do I trust you that you don't go bury your dead and immediately after that they then skin somebody? Okay. Because of also the, the secession, because if you skin somebody yeah. right, the sure. person could be in line to yeah, sure. yeah. occupy. So people yeah. could be actually, I'm, I'm sure this will be based on intelligence, that people are probably planning to do something. Because we've seen, yeah. in fact, in Sunday, yeah. something similar happened. When, in, I think the, the two is called Nakun or something, he, yeah, was, so. he was invited, he was going to skin somebody, and yeah. they were invited to, to stop it. Because people are trying to position themselves, as you said, to yeah. sort of be in line to occupy this. You know, so I think this is a preemptive attempt uh, by the eminent chief to say, look, we are aware of what is happening or what can potentially happen. Okay. It's important for the process that nobody tran truncates it or nobody hijacks it. But I think it's also it's instructive that Mr. Kandapa has been copied Copy on this. Here. And I was hoping that well, of course, he will inform his colleague ministers, Defense and Interior, Interior. the IGP, and certainly uh, the BNI mm. boss. That was my next question to you about yes. the security situation in Dagon currently and what it should be, because we've heard about reinforcements going yeah. in. Because this is a huge task for them. It's a huge task for them. It's critical for the BNI people who are on the ground. And let me say this for the BNI. Prior to the murder of the Yana and Danny, the BNI had actually sent a report to Accra okay. in detail about the arming and 
the assessment was very clear that such a thing could happen. So there's always a gap between what the intelligence security assessments are and what the client, in this case government, mm. wants to do with the intelligence. So I think I'm happy that the 24 committee has brought this proactive statement, but also that already we are seeing the reinforcement um, of police and then of the military. Now let me make this clear. The police and the military have been there and we've spent hundreds of millions of cities on that internal peacekeeping process. And that is where that cost alone becomes a, Ghana, a Ghanaian interest mm. of diverting crucial national development funds to keep the peace, which of course is very necessary. You know, so the security bit, so far, so good. We need more proactive assessment of the potential threats that might happen. I think Boli has taken us by surprise. It shouldn't happen between now and Friday when they enter the Bewa Palace for the final funeral rites. There will be detractors, and I think name will tell you, you know, there are people who, who have an incentive in disrupting the process. Yeah. It's important. Look, the, the tools at the disposal of the state are so massive that the state of Ghana must demonstrate its willingness and capacity to ensure that they support the mediation committee to get this done once and for all. Hubande, your, your final thoughts on this, looking yeah. at the security and the statement that's came in. If I look at the statement that just came in, mm -hmm. uh, first of all, let me re-emphasize mm -hmm. how mediation is hard work. Mm -hmm. So I want to believe that every day, mm -hmm. both physical and uh, distant contacts are happening between the committee and the parties. Mm -hmm. The ownership really of this process is in the uh, two royal gates, Dagon. Yeah. How are the people being carried along needs also to happen. And you are doing that right now because yeah. you are helping to carry along the people of Ghana mm -hmm. to understand what is happening. Yeah. Now, closely related to that, in that process of consultation, if the statement is framed in our commitment together yeah. as parties from the Abudu and Amdani royal families, with working with the committee of eminent chiefs we have all accepted that once the processes of the funerals begin no party should enskin mm -hmm. what that framing does is to recognize their role in the way and manner the funeral should not happen okay. so it not only do they recognize the ownership in the parties but it also is an assuring thing that this statement appears as a directive mm -hmm. yeah. Mm -hmm. and i want to continue to appeal that mediation is not direct mm -hmm. okay. it is soliciting cooperation through persuasion mm -hmm. so that will be point number one so, so you you would you, have wish there was, a, there was a more cooperative inclusive framing of of, yeah. of, of yeah. the mm -hmm. of the language mm -hmm. yeah. because when you say it's like i'm directing you yeah. to because technically speaking mm -hmm. the commander-in-chief who is our head of state the president is the one who can direct Anybody, our security yeah. Yeah, to do you understand what yeah, i mean i get you yeah so but let me not go into that detail you, yeah. but let me uh, uh, take a step back and see having made this observation let's keep in mind that we should not underrate the progress that has been made and i was uh, making a note to myself evans we've been together together with name over the years yes. as we speak the process in Dagon has been highly depoliticized. Mm. That's very important. It's unprecedented to see that Abudus and Andanis are not doing things together. Yeah. So at the level of the people, a lot has happened and we must appreciate it. Now, in the next few days, we need to bring forward what vision is there for Dagon. Now, name described it in the collective of Ghana, yeah. our peace and stability. But more importantly, and we don't have the time for that, if we had time another time, I will argue that when you are a state and you don't have your own capacity mm -hmm. to resolve your own problems mm -hmm. peacefully, mm -hmm. you are in real trouble. Mm -hmm. So I'm gratified that it doesn't matter how the hurdles have been and how difficult it has been. Ghana, from 
the tragedy of 2002 on Dagon has consistently tried to make sure that we are responding and we're dealing with this. Okay. And that should urge us on and inspire us. And diplomatically, I cannot mention mm -hmm. examples. Yeah. But uh, 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 privately, I can talk about how that in itself is a problem. Okay. The fact that yeah. you're looking elsewhere for your problem to be solved yeah. actually multiplies your yeah. own problem. But in this case, we've done it ourselves. We've done it yeah. ourselves. Okay. And we should be looking positively at that. And basically, to conclude, my trust is this. He made that uh, observation, and I want to emphasize it. The people of Dagbon, at the end of the day, should be proud that in all this, they brought Ghana out of what was seen to be intractable internationally, mm -hmm. and that Ghana continued to be a very peaceful state and a very stable state. I'm grateful, uh, yeah. Imano Bombande, mm -hmm. and also Dr. Kwesiening. Uh, we just hope that in the next few days, the funerals will happen without any incident. Uh, we'll see how this unfolds in the next few days. Thank you for watching. My name is Evans Mensah.